Hey guys, what's up? It's Lainey and today I'm doing a video on my writing process then and now. I thought this would be a really interesting video because I was watching some of my writing vlogs from 2016 and I'm like, wow, my writing process is wildly different than it was back then. 2016 is when I started to chronicle my writing process and my writing journey to hopefully being published one day. I wanted to kind of share with what I have learned kind of in the past two years about um, writing. Now this isn't so much as then I did it totally wrong because there's really no wrong way to write but um, this is more kind of like how I have evolved as a writer from the past two years. I broke it down into seven different categories. The first one is going to be about ideas. The second one is going to be about planning. The third one is going to be about outlining. The fourth one is going to be about writing. The fifth one is going to be about self-editing. The sixth one is going to be about critiquing slash the writing community. And the seventh one is going to be about ethics. That's kind of like the far off one from the, um, the writing process. Let's get started. Ideas. This one hasn't really changed that much from the past two years. Then I was pretty much inspired by media, mostly visual media, and sometimes I would hop on generators and get my ideas going that way. Most recently, that is still how I am getting my ideas for different stories. I am totally inspired by what I see. That just really hasn't changed from then to now. That one was quick. Next, we're going to go on to the planning. My planning with my old projects were pretty bare minimum. Very rarely came up with character sheets. I didn't really go in very much into the world at all. I kind of would just discover those things as I was writing. That has completely changed over the past couple years. Now how I do my planning is definitely story binders. These are for my two current projects, I guess. This one is for Sharp Hollows. This one is for Pair of Prides, which is my pirate book that I wrote recently. Sharp Hollows was like the first book I really, really started planning for. Most of the world building is like a huge thing. And I printed out character sheets that I found online and just filled them out, really getting to know the world, the characters, the story I wanted to tell. I really enjoyed making the story binders. So that's something I'll be continuing on in the future. Third one is outlining. I can even go back further from like before I started to like chronicle my writing process here. I was very loosely a pantser and I actually hate both those terms. I hate pantser and planner. For the sake of understanding what I'm talking about, I definitely was a pantser. I wouldn't outline. I kind of just wrote and wrote and wrote and then when I ran out of ideas I would stop writing it. I have so many unfinished writing projects in my computer here. I would have liked to have finished them just to get more writing experience. I learned so much about writing with each um, first draft that I write. But for my Red Riding Hood project, which was the project that I was working on when I first started my writing vlogs, that one I did outline a little bit. I wrote uh, very quick bullet points of what I was wor always working towards in the story, and that helped. It was very bare minimum. Since then, I have tried out several different outlining processes. For Sharp Hollows, I did the post-it note um, outlining process. I saw Mary E. Pearson do or she talked about it so I'm like hey I'm gonna try that so I did that for my pirate project I actually outlined each act and I would write the act and then I would be jotting down different things I wanted to see in the next act and then after I finished writing the first act I would outline the second act and then while I was writing the second act I would be jotting down things I wanted to see in the third act and then when I finished the second act I would outline the third act that helped me a lot and I really liked that process. It kept me motivated and it always kept a clear vision for me of what I was working towards. And then once I finished that, I was able to, you know, expel all of my thoughts for the next act, write it all down, then organize it and outline it. And then I was off writing again. One thing though that hasn't changed from then to now is that I've always outlined by hand. I've never got on my computer and outlined that way. I'm outlining in jotting down and brainstorming ideas is always done in a notebook for me. That's just the best way for me to get my thoughts across. The fourth topic in the process is the actual writing. This one's kind of hard because it's not like I'm good at writing now. The thing that is the same from then to now is that I do write chronologically. That has never changed and I don't think that will change. Even during this past NaNoWriMo I had to skip this huge big action scene because I didn't know what was really going down in the scene but it 
changes all the characters emotions going into the next scene so that was like so hard for me to skip that scene and then start up again because I'm like how do my characters feel I don't know because I haven't written it yet but that was hard for me that kind of solidified my feelings of me being a chronological writer I think the biggest thing that has changed for me going forward and kind of how I've evolved as a writer is that I am more knowledgeable in craft. I'm also more consistent in sticking to a writing schedule. Number five is self-editing. This one is the most interesting because this was the reason why I wanted to make this video. When I talk about my self-editing in past videos, I'm like <sighs> cringing. I developed such a bad habit when I was in college. I would write my papers glance through them, proofread it. I didn't really go much beyond that and that kind of came up with this bad habit that I've developed where I go into the second draft needing to fix everything. Big picture, small picture, line edits, word choice, I do it all in, a, in the, my first read through. That's just not how I want to do it going forward. It's just too much. I need to let go of needing to perfect. Uh, the second draft. I'll probably first be self-editing my Sharp Hollows rewrite. I'm testing out different, several different things with self-editing with Sharp Hollows that I could talk about more later, but one of those things is I need to break it down way more and go big picture first and just concentrate on those big picture things like the characters and the setting and the actual plot. And then I could start working on the smaller things like the subplots and the sentence structure and the prose and the diction and everything like that. Work from the top and go down and like be fine with that. And that is the hardest habit that I'm going to be needing to break. That's the one thing that I feel like I've done wrong in the past. The sixth one is critiquing slash community. In the past, I never had critique partners. Even though I did when I was in high school and I was in college, I wrote in a community for like novel writing, I didn't have a community. That has definitely changed and that has definitely changed over the past year, I would say. I am part of a writing group that I created with my critique partner, Amanda. And we're not just critique partners, we're like friends too. When it comes to writing she's always the first one I go to. She knows my stories the best. I know her stories the best. So it's having that collaborative feeling of having someone that you can lean on. Someone that won't get sick of you when you're talking about writing because they're talking just as much about writing to you as you are to them. Creating the critique group is amazing. I'm so happy I'm a part of it and having more writers to talk to, more insight into the writing process, their craft, and everything like that. It's great. You need to have at least one critique partner just so that you can really grow as a writer because I have learned so much about writing just critiquing their work. And the last one I want to talk about is about ethics. Kind of how I viewed writing before and how I view writing now. So in 2016 is when I started to do my writing vlogs. I kind of made writing a priority and how I wanted to hopefully see myself becoming an author one day. Prior to that I was very inconsistent with writing. I was putting it off for months at a time. I wouldn't do it. It kept getting farther and farther away because it wasn't something that was high on my priority list. 2016 was when I decided that hey I need to like really start focusing on my craft and my writing and my storytelling. That is when everything changed. That's when I became more consistent with writing. Of course you come and go with different, you know, dry spells when it comes to writing, but I've written more in the past two years than I have any years before that. Because I'm more focused and driven to, you know, achieve my dreams. That sounded really corny. I just love the feeling of wanting to obtain my goals. Becoming an author is one of them is probably the only one if I'm being if I'm being honest that's the only thing I care about right now that is how my writing process has changed from then to now and I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it was interesting and I hope you guys all have a really great day and I'll see you guys very soon bye